forecasting, um, what are some of the other opportunities or rather trends that a business analyst or anyone else there who is looking to having a BA in their company or mm -hmm. even an individual who is a business analyst can take advantage of when it comes to using this data to make decisions? Yeah. So when it comes to forecasting, mm -hmm. it has a lot of work behind. Yes. Because it's basically working with probabilities, but they have to be informed. And first, historical data. Yes. First, the business has to have been operating for quite some time. Yeah. Because you have to work with um, last year, you're comparing full year data with this month last year, this month two years ago. So it doesn't have to be far back, but you need loads of data. It mm -hmm. cannot, forecasting cannot be perfectly done over three or four months. Yes. It has to be over a period of time because you'd want to see per quarter. Yes. This quarter, quarter one compared yes. to last year, quarter one, yes. what did we do? Correct. Quarter mm -hmm. two compared to quarter two last yeah. year or quarter two compared to quarter one and quarter two last year. Yeah. There are those metrics that you keep uh, comparing mm -hmm. and they help you come up with a trend. Yeah. When you have the trend, you figure out if that trend was repeated this year, mm. would we benefit from yes. it? Yes. If that trend was like that because of, let's say, elections last year, this year there will not be elections. Business mm -hmm. has picked up. Yeah. So if we plan to do, let's say, a uh, 15% more, what would you do? Mm. So forecasting requires data and it also requires occurrences that have been there before. Okay. You just can't come up with a figure. The figure has to be informed. Mm. And sometimes you have to prepare for the best yes. case scenario and mm. the worst case scenario. Right. And um, people who do forecasting know we have um, the number that you focus for then you have focus one and focus two. That mm. is best case and another one. If that does not happen, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. And sometimes halfway into mm. the forecast period mm. or the actualization period, you realize that your figures were too big. Mm. You have an opportunity to now reduce. You yes. now plan, do I reduce further? Mm. Or do I just be stagnant? Yeah. So forecasting is a bit of numbers yes. and what practice exists. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so most of it, it's all by getting informed decisions from the data that we collect. So mm -hmm. what challenges uh, would you say you've encountered in your experience in regards to this collection of data? Challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's inconsistent. Correct. And that's a big one because yes. then you can't focus. You've correct. agreed with your customer to give you sales data and you want it in this format, yes. in this period. Yes. This time they give you, mm. next time they don't. Mm. So you you lack the flow. Like you yeah. find, I I have data but I can do nothing with it because yeah. it does not help me make any decision. Mm. The other time is a uh, validity of the data. Mm. You find, as a business analyst, even if you have data from mm. other sources, yes. you have your own data that you track, the actual data such that yeah. uh, my own sales data for the company says I sold uh, 50,000 packs in January, mm. 18 February, mm. 17 March. Mm -hmm. When I get data from the third party and also from the customer themselves, mm. I'll compare what they have given. Mm. Sometimes you find if the variance is too high, mm. you'd ask them, why is your variance matching from mine? Yeah. Sometimes it should be because of how they gave the discount, yeah. they decided to do bonusing. Mm. Sometimes it's even erroneously picked. So those are the things you have to adjust for. Yes. So sometimes when you find every time you have the data, it has extreme, extreme variances, mm. that will affect your work because you always have to put a certain window of error that you can always accommodate mm -hmm. and that error might affect a very big um, mm -hmm. factor when yeah. it comes to actualization of business. Right. So that is another one. Mm -hmm. The second challenge I face sometimes is SLA, service level agreement. Yeah. I've agreed, let's say like with the demand, yeah. if I'm supposed to affect their numbers, I can give them an event that seven months out Sometimes you find some situations happen in the month and you're like, I forgot about this and oh God, I need to action it now. And when you send to them, it's almost too late or you're mm -hmm. forcing them to change their whole processes, which is not part of the 
third party, yeah. which is not part of their procedures yeah. and how they do things. Right. Or sometimes I'm supposed to give data that mm. will inform a major meeting that is happening. Mm. And remember that meeting is not with my boss. It's mm. a, my boss mm. and the CEO yeah. and the other Maybe even regional heads. Yeah. So sometimes when time, mm. if I do not deliver on the day I said just yeah. because maybe I forgot or something happened, mm. it becomes a challenge sometimes. You have to figure out how to handle the situation yes. and hope that the uh, recipient would understand. Okay. So it can be a bit hectic sometimes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, so I'd like you to walk us through a typical day-to-day -day scenario mm -hmm. of you have sat in your office, you've collected data as a BA, Mm -hmm. um, and just the process, how it will look like a typical day. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll pick uh, the most busiest time of my work, yeah. which is usually end month. Yes. Uh, the last days of the month and the first five days of the month. Mm -hmm. um, what that means is, oh, I also forgot to say that um, sometimes business anal analysts mm -hmm. have to work with our teams. Wow. Yes where you help them track their KPIs mm. and help um, them see how achievement of their KPIs affect the sales. Okay. So towards the end of the month, mostly is usually to analyze. Mm. And um, there's a report I work on to trigger the teams where they are in the achievement of KPIs and a few things they may need to do to achieve. Yeah. And sometimes when achievement of yeah. that means the sales target by the sales people yeah. has been met mm -hmm. and then um, that in turn will lead to the marketing team. Yes. So first towards the end of the month is prepare the um, report mm -hmm. on the KPI achievement yes. and also let them know if they are going at the pace they are, this is where they end up, mm -hmm. but if they go according to the um, promise they made to achieve, this mm -hmm. is where it will be. Mm -hmm. So those are two figures that they have to weigh and figure out. Mm -hmm. If I cannot achieve this, yeah. I can go halfway. Yeah. Then after that, I will prepare uh, the spreadsheet where I collect data from the um, distributors and other customers uh, needs to be updated uh, to capture a new month, where you add a new month into the um, spreadsheet mm -hmm. and you capture the new value, which is a time difference, mm -hmm. so that when you key in the figures, they give mm -hmm. you the end. Yeah. So you have to prepare that just ready to key in the product. Mm -hmm. Then if the third party is going to trigger when the data has arrived, you have to clean it up according to the um, criteria you use, maybe yeah. the parameters you want to track. Yeah. Then you sense check that data against, I told you I always have a master data where mm -hmm. I expect uh, last month should have been this figure or yes. something close to that. Yes. So I check through their history data and figure out if those key figures mm -hmm. are there. Mm -hmm. Like last year we achieved this, so yeah. whatever data they have, even if it has new month, mm -hmm. last year's figure has to be this. Yeah. So I sense check, if it is okay, I'll go ahead to analyze mm -hmm. and uh, make reports. I use Power BI to create the visuals for the team. I love Power BI. <laughs> so you have to make sure that data is okay because you just have to adopt from yeah. the sales from the spreadsheet. Yeah. Then you have. So if the data is wrong, everything that you'll be showing and making the figures and the you know. decisions and let's push to the to the customers. Let's withdraw. We have oversold. We have undersold. So if the raw data is wrong, that means. Everything else is wrong. So I take <laughs> much of the time yeah. to do sense checking of the yeah. data, check if it's correct. Mm -hmm. If I put um, a figure of like a pass, if I take that figure and just on the side do a growth of 5%, do I get the figure they have given? Yeah. Just to check, just reverse tracking of the data. If it's okay, I'll put it in Power BI. I have different um, reports. Mm -hmm. Those reports are, so the raw data that I have in its raw format, I'll send that to the demand, the demand team. Mm -hmm. The demand team will use it to send it to the focusing team as well mm -hmm. to help them plan what yeah. the next month will be. Yeah. So we had planned, we had planned for 60 packets. Yes. We sold 59, mm. so that means the customer has one extra. Mm. So if we give them this amount, we'll mm. not be overstocking. Mm. And sometimes you find 
um, if let's say the ones who are shipping the products, there's a problem mm -hmm. somewhere, mm -hmm. or customs are delayed, mm -hmm. the products that we have, can we divide 10 amongst the customers that we have? Okay. Then next, when that uh, shipment is released, yes. we can give them the remainders. Mm -hmm. But that will depend with how much they have sold in this month. Yes. So that sales report has to go to the demand team. Yes. Then when I give them the raw data, I use that data to make the reports. Yeah. The reports will be sent to the marketing team, they'll be sent to the um, demand, to the sales team, mm -hmm. and also to the higher management. Okay. And remember, each of these teams look at different metrics. Uh, metrics. Yeah. There are those who want to see the sales figure, there are those people who want to see how much stock is in trade, and there are those who want to see how are we growing yeah. the growth by percentage, by volume of yeah. value? Yeah. There's this one who want to see the figure itself, yes. not the percentages, the figure. The figure. I've yeah. sold 6,000 more, mm. I've sold 3,000 more. Mm. So you prepare the reports in those different formats and mm. send them, okay. such that uh, by the second week of the month, yeah. the meetings are going. Yeah. And you know you have to understand the data and uh, internalize it. Yeah. If you noticed any inconsistency yeah, or, or anomaly, yeah. you have to have footnotes yeah. somewhere. And you'll sit in those meetings, even if you'll see nothing, just when there's a question of this. Because sometimes we're in February discussing why we seem to register growth. Then they ask, uh, Evelyn, can you explain why this happened? You have to go back and remind them. Remember, our competitors did not have data, did not have products in November. Mm -hmm. And the products came in early mm -hmm. January. Mm -hmm. So that means we have been selling our share and their share during November and yeah. December yeah. and yeah. half of January. Yeah. So that is why this quote, that quarter, mm -hmm. compared to the same quarter last year, mm -hmm. we seem to have grown 200%. Yeah. But when they come back to normal, yeah. this is what we expect to be. Okay. So sometimes you have to have like the historical data. Mm -hmm. And that's why when I'm storing my notes mm. and something like that happened like when you're looking at the marketing sites and you realize something like that mm. i have somewhere where i track what mm. happened in what month yeah. such that when somebody tries to ask i'm not i don't know mm. i'll figure out yes so you are there to to be an encyclopedia let me say <laughs> yes all right uh any other thing yeah. you feel like we should talk to the um, audience about before we comp we end this just one more thing mm -hmm. I'd like uh, maybe to point out. When you look at uh, everything now, this is moving towards data. Yes. But one thing that we should not forget at all yeah. is that the traditional way of doing business is always needs to be uh, considered. Yeah. Because it's by that basis that you build on with data. Yes. You cannot just take data alone and you start making predictions and yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. How you do business has to be there, the norms, the systems, what happens in yeah. a certain industry. The product gets prepared like this, it's yeah. sold like this, these are the customers and this and uh, this is the, what the end product and this is what we expect. The only thing that data does is to help you get to the end faster. Yeah. So you must have the footprint, mm. then you have data on the other hand, you're yes. like, this is the typical customer, mm. but with the rise of Instagram and podcast and all these global and all these people want to be brought for things at home, what can I do mm. to make sure my traditional customers are there and add more on the rest? Correct. So data should not be used entirely on its yes. own. It is an addition to help you get to that goal faster. Yes. And having like a, an avatar of your customer as a business yeah. is very key. You yeah. have the traditional customer, then you build the other avatars of your customer based with experiences, yes. market trends and all that. Then you figure out how can I use data yes. to get to these avatars. Uh, so thank you. I like that, Evelyn. Um, and thank you so much for the insights that you've shared today as a business analyst and what role they play and in using data to make informed decisions or to advise the company and individuals further. So um, we really appreciate your insights that have been shared today and see you in the next episode. Please follow me uh, on YouTube, Data Talks with Lauren, um, subscribe and then follow me on LinkedIn as well and my other social platforms, Lauren and Uvare. That has been it. 
Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next episode. Bye. Bye.